Well, good morning. Good morning. When I see the rain at times, I feel the rain, sometimes it goes down pretty hard. I always think about God and grace. That's how much he loves us. He sends that grace down on and a little little bit of rain, you're walking around like this, the top of it. But all of a sudden that storm comes in, a storm. But with God, it's his grace. And it's so overwhelming and we we thirst for it more and more. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us prepare ourselves for this celebration. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on each and every one of us this morning and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. All powerful living God, direct your love that is within us, that the efforts in your name of your Son, we may bring mankind to unity and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us? as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong. And the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin, 
To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards are also announced these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, in your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place on the way and how they came to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do your questions arrive in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see me, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And I said, and as he said this, he showed him his hands and feet. But he was still incredulous for joy and were amazed. He asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish and he took it and ate it in front of them. And he said to them, these are my words that I spoke while I was still with you and everything written about me in the law of Moses and in, in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand scripture and he said to them, thus this is written, Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that a repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem to the witnesses of these things, the gospel of the Lord. I'm always amazed. When Jesus entered, the first thing he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Do not be troubled. 
you don't know it's me, look at me, pray to me, graciously open your hearts to me, and then you will see me. Today's gospel is a special message of Jesus to discourage Christians. How, am I, how many times have we been discouraged? How many times have we been taken back with things around us? Are we fearful? Are we doubtful? Depressed? Do we wonder what life is going to bring next? Hmm. That's the first thing I think about in the morning. <laughs> I'm doubtful, I'm fearful. I don't know what's going to happen on next. But what I do know, he's with me and he's also with you. We're on a journey and the journey is to get to heaven. And he is the door. He's the sheep. He's the door of the sheep gate to let all his little sheep come in. And I say, bah, like a sheep, because I'm one of them. I'm happy to get in there. Jesus took on all our problems. That cross took on all our problems. You, you don't, we don't carry them ourselves. We don't walk around and say, oh, woe is me, woe is me. Blessed are we, because Jesus took our problems upon him. The problem it is, he takes them, but we have to tell him. We have to tell him. We just don't see, well, I said my prayers this morning, the Our Father, Hail Mary, they're powerful prayers, I say them myself. But the prayer to go to him and get, tell him how we're feeling, what's going on. Talked to some women last night, and one thing they were, that was told by me is, why are you so discouraged? I know you're going through bad things, but what happened to him on the cross? And he did it for us. And it was, well, here we go. Here we go, Ted. Then came the resurrection. Yes. Then he came. And light covered the earth. And as Father Bob said in his homily Easter, then darkness comes in like the eclipse. I'm going to take this from Bob a little bit. The eclipse. And he showed that big white, Gold, the gold thing was the sun, and it came with it. You, you were there. Irene, you were there. And he, he covered it. He covered it. And he said, well, how long is the eclipse? And who, who, you know, he's, he says, I, I'm not a rocket scientist, but he's one of the smartest men I've ever been around. But anyway, he said five minutes. And then, uh, then I'm, I'm thinking, uh, who's going to watch it? And before he said it, I'm thinking, I'm going to be taking a nap. <laughs> then he tells the whole parish I'm 80 years old. I don't like him at all. <laughs> but that's what he does. He removes that darkness. He removes the things that blind us from him. And we could talk about blindness, but sometimes <laughs> I'm going off the whole thing, Teddy. What I have written down here, it's gone. With blindness. I went and had my eyes examined the other day, and I, we all have, and they put the drops in, and my eyes dilated, and, you know, and the doctor, oh, did you bring your sunglasses? I said, yes, I got them in my pocket. Well, as I'm driving around and that, my eyes become blurry. I could see, but I couldn't see clearly. I could see, but I couldn't see clearly. There was a blur there that I couldn't see everything around me. I could see the road and that, but I couldn't look over here or look over there. But the sunlight started bothering me. And I thought about that when I got home in, in my prayer. And as we all sometimes have days that we don't see him clearly. We don't feel the peace. 
We don't, uh, my, my good friend Red over there, Ruthie, when she's here, she says Shalom. And that's the Jewish name. It, 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 they have it for peace. They say Shalom. But if you really think about it, they're saying Shalom from their heart, that peace be with you. And that's what Christ said, Shalom, that that peace will be with you. And I understood that I have to stop back and like the doctor said, it will go away. And like our supreme physician says, if you're not seeing me clearly, don't worry about it. It's going to clear up for each and every one. It is going to clear up. Flip a page. We covered off. But then Jesus said, it's wonderful. Wonderful. He, he says, touch me and see. If you're not seeing Jesus, you're not touching him. The lady with the hemorrhage ran by and she said, people were crowding in, but he, he, she touched that tassel. And what did he do? He turned around. A mob was there. He, you, you, everybody's watched Jesus to film and that, that. But everybody crowds in on him everywhere. And here he feels this touch because of her faith. Let's start showing our faith after this Easter. Showing our faith that we're faithful to reach out and just touch him. And he will take care of it. Touch him in your prayers. Touch him in everything we do. How we live. What we do morally. How we follow what the church is teaching us. How we stand up for things. And why we stand up. Because we're touching Jesus. If we're touching him, we have to live like him. We have to feel him. We have to inhale him deep within us. And I know it's hard. There's a lot of things go on. But the more that clearing comes to, it becomes clear to you what he's trying to say. And as I said before, he's arisen, he's alive. He was in perfect love relationship with his father. That's what caused him to be what he is and what he did. Let us be in that perfect relationship with Jesus that we can die of ourselves and rise up. I, 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 it's, I do it myself. Sometimes I'm tired and I'm crabby. Ask Jocelyn, she knows. Tired and crabby and everybody said, you look terrible. I went in yesterday for a funeral for a good friend in that funeral mass. And one of the guys that was serving mass, sidebar Teddy, you'll like this one. You awake? I went into the sacristy and he says, happy 80th birthday. He said, but I tell you, you don't look 80. I said, thank you, but I feel 90. You like that one, Teddy? Okay. <laughs> and he, he said, you know, Jesus knew the Father and the Father knew him. If we know Jesus, we know the Father and the whole Holy Spirit comes there. I'm not going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We'll be here all morning and I know I talk too much anyway. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wraps his loving hand around your heart. And he sets us ablaze, and we don't even know. Right there, Brian, he sets us ablaze. There we go. We're set on fire. Don't put that fire out. Don't put it out. Charge yourself. Sometimes we have to charge ourselves. 
That's why we have the sacraments. That's why we have reconciliation. To recharge. Our batteries run low. And now that the world knows I'm 80 years old, due to my pastor, I guess I have to charge more frequently. And we all do. It's part of life. The pain in the back, the pain in the knees, the frustration. That's part of life. But what did he, what did he feel? And we have to know from that gospel, not my ranting and getting all excited, what should we know? That God is love. That God is love. The best ending of the story for us. God is love. And I, I believe you don't have to read the gospel from end to end. But you, what you realize when you do, especially the New Testament, that God is love, that Jesus came. And if we see Jesus, we see the Father, because the Father is in him. But Jesus is in us. And if we learn, now this is, I, sh I should have just said this, Teddy, what I'm gonna say right now and sat down, we could have got out of here about 20 minutes earlier. Perfect, perfect love casts out all fear. Key word is all fear. If you're, perfect, if you're perfectly in love with our Christ, you're perfectly in love with your heart's on fire through the Holy Spirit, you're so much in love with Him, every breath you take, you thank Him for it. And it will cast out all fear because we'll see Him in action. That wasn't too bad, Ted. I got a few more minutes. <laughs> Let us now offer our prayers Happy to our. <laughs> it's not my birthday. <laughs> John, you're not singing. Happy birthday to you. 80 in a few days. Old enough to know better, but still too young to care. I guess. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, now I wish I was 80 every day, but I'm getting older. <laughs> now let us offer our prayers to our Father in heaven, who has done great and wonderful things for us. For each and every one of us that gather here this morning, that the spirit of servanthood will come into our hearts that we have no fear that we serve our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who serve the church, and each and every one of us serve the church because we are a church and we go out in the community, Father. We ask you to bless our actions this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for the people of the world that are discouraged, people that, that need your love, that we could come, come forth with you, Lord, through the Holy Spirit to quench them and feed them with our love through you. We pray to the Lord. We lift up the poor and the suffering, the rejected and the forgotten. For those who are addicted, for those who have nowhere to turn, we pray to the Lord. And for those who died in the peace of Christ, I'm lifting up Ed Miller. We had the funeral mass and the cemetery service. We lift up the Miller family. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Now for the attentions that you hold in your heart in silence or out loud. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the, all the unborn children that our love for them may keep them safe until the joyous day of their birth. Let us pray to the Lord. As we raise our voices to you this morning, O oh loving and caring Father, we ask you to lift us up, lift us up through the Holy Spirit, through your joy, that we feel your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us now say the prayer that Jesus has taught each and every one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper.
bow down for the blessing. May God the Father bless you. Amen. May God the Son heal you. Amen. And may God the Holy Spirit fill you on fire. Amen. And I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and come to the front of the fresh, and do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.